everyone, I'm Gina from Fibers and Design and today we'll be talking about composition. Now if you're new to weaving or with design in general, you might be wondering how to compose your next piece or maybe even your first piece. In this video, I'm going to show you how to compose the images, shapes or patterns better on the warp. Even if you're into only weaving colors or shapes or patterns, with a basic understanding of composition and how it works, it will help improve the design of your weaving. Now in this tutorial, I'm going to show you these techniques on my notepad. So we're trying something a little bit different. I'm also going to show you some examples of composition and weaving on some samples that I've woven. So let's get back to basics and get to the sketchbook. The essential goal of creating composition is building balance between spaces. No matter what surface that you're using, whatever space that you have, it's essential that you fill it accordingly and appropriately to the project that you're creating. So depending on if you're filling it with color, shapes, or brush strokes, yarn, the important thing is that you fill it. There are two types of spaces, positive space and negative space. Positive space is the space that you fill and negative space is the space that's not filled by any color or shapes. It's your goal when building a composition to create a harmonious balance between both positive and negative space. Here on the left, the black diamond is the positive space and the small white triangles are the negative space. However, on the right, the white diamond is the negative space, while the four black triangles are the positive space. Scale of the objects or color that you're using to fill in the negative space plays an essential role to composition. Think about the size of the surface that you are filling. Is it small? Is it large? For example, in this first square with a triangle, in order to create harmony with this long rectangular form, the triangle must also be very large if it's going to stand alone. The corners of the triangle fit the edges of the rectangle. And as you can see, if I put it towards the middle, the top, or the bottom, it fits in. The positive space of the triangle balances the negative space of the rectangle. In contrast to the larger triangles, these smaller triangles don't take up as much space and they leave a lot more negative space of the, in the rectangle, therefore causing an imbalance in positive and negative space. Scale and weight go hand in hand. When you add an object to the composition, it automatically adds weight to one side. It automatically shifts weight to one side. So it's important that you create balance with another object on the other opposite side of it. So for example, here, setting the two triangles across from each other or next to each other can help create balance and balance out the weight. Here in this first example, there is a large triangle at the top. Now, in order to balance out the weight here, the small triangle doesn't balance the weight of the top triangle. Therefore, on the right, by adding three small triangles that are roughly the size of the larger triangle, helps balance out the top and the bottom weights. Here on the right, there are two triangles sitting side by side. And in order to balance the other side, two other triangles are added. Although the triangles are just the outlines, their positive and negative space balance out the opposite side. So your next question is probably, how do you make balance? Balance can often be created in a few different ways. Here, for example, I'm placing two objects that are about the same size next to each other. This helps create a mirrored effect and, the even, and an even distribution of weight. Here in the second example, I'm creating a pattern that repeats itself throughout the entire page. Creating a pattern creates a uniformed appearance of the objects in a composition. The third example uses angles to create balance. Angles are used to create a balance in the weight and shift the eyes of the viewer. 
Here are a few mistakes to avoid. In this example, the weight distribution of the objects is uneven. At the bottom, there's a lot of weight. However, towards the mid half and upper region, there is not so much weight. And one object just stays over to the side and there's way too much negative space. In the second example, angles are used to move the eyes of the viewer. However, there's not enough of the angles in the image, which leaves a lot more negative space than positive space. This technique can be used really well if you have enough balance of the objects and fill in this space with the proper angles. The third example does a great job in filling in the lower half of the page. However, the top half is missing some, some objects which create this uneven uneven balance. To build some visual interest, it could also use a few more objects that go off the page or close to the edge. Ah, visual interest. How do you build visual interest when there's so many rules to composition? Well, one of my favorite ways of building visual interest in your weaving or in any design is with patterns. Now, patterns can be um, something simple as stripes, shapes, uh, squares, dashes, uh, and rotating different colors or alternating colors. Um, all of these can build visual interest um, by with repetitions of a shape or a color. The second way here is by using motion. Now it's difficult to create motion on a 2D form. However, when you're building a composition, you can move the eyes of the viewer with pat patterns or using shapes or colors to help guide the eye of the viewer. Another great way is by adding color. Remember to keep it simple when you're first starting to mix colors. Try mixing a pair of analogous colors, complementary colors, or colors that are in the similar color family. You can add visual interest by using these two or three colors in a pattern or a visual design. Now, there are a few tips that I would give for um, developing patterns in your weaving. First, stay consistent in the pattern. Um, don't change the shapes and the, size of the, and the size of the pattern unless that's the image that you want. Um, also, stay consistent in the pattern as you're working. If you have a long piece and the, the size of the material or um, the amount of it, you want to make sure that you're staying consistent. Uh, the next one is uh, where you're beginning the pattern, where are you or where are you beginning the visual interest. Um, be sure that it stays, uh, again, consistent and centered to the piece. Now, if you're working on a piece that has multiple panels, that's a different story. But when you're making something that's just with one panel, you want to make sure that you're keeping the work centered. When building color in your weaving, try using variations of a color in the its darkness or the light um, and to kind of build depth into your colors. If you're new to colors, then I would recommend limiting your color palette uh, to two to three colors in one project and then slowly building up to different colors that you like. And this will help, this will help you kind of control how much you use and learn how to develop colors on the loom. There's an expression that we tend to use when drawing and it's working the page or working the paper. And, but in this case, we'll be looking at how to work, work, working the warp can be a little hard to be hard to say, but when working the warp, you want to be looking about how you will disperse the weight or design that you're making. So when we're talking about composition, you're trying to look at, you want to decide where your focus of the weaving is going to be. Maybe you're weaving something with the entire panel is going to be, um, perhaps in your weaving, the entire panel is going to be a pattern and it's going to be repeating. Maybe you'll be using angles to help lead the eye of the viewer. Um, you want to think about where is going to, where the focus of your work is going to be. Are you going to be using tassels? Are you going to use rhinots to help draw the eye or create drama? Okay. Also, if you're using a pattern, what directions are the angles going to be pointing to? There's always an angle. There's always a direction of the objects that you're moving. So you want to make sure that you have like a nice balance, um, a nice balanced number of objects pointing in a certain direction and moving in different directions. Maybe some are on the page, some are off of the page. The amazing thing about working on the loom is that we're not bound by lines and 
we're not bound by paper, we're able to use the yarn to make the compositions for us. If it, even if it's by dangling strands of yarn, creating patterns or bars or stripes or chunks or bl color blocks or fabric blocks, all of these create different textures and colors. And so we're not so limited in what we can do with it. So it's important that you work on balancing your composition, but also experimenting with um, creating different shapes colors, textures, and see how they balance out on the loom. Another great tip for using this, another great tip for weaving is looking at angles. Um, you can use angles to draw the eye of the viewer, not only with a color block that you create, but also with the hanging fabric or hanging yarn that we use. You can create textures and lines with twining or create clouds or bubbles of fabric or of yarn and help create compositions of texture. Or you can create a focal point in your weaving in the center with lots of texture or a color piece. There's lots of different ways that you can create interest on the loom. Here are some of the woven samples that I made um, that show this compositions of what we just talked about. Keep in mind that in this woven sample, there's shapes, but you can also imagine these shapes as patterns or uh, different types of texture, right? Um, even if you're not into weaving shapes, you can use this for an idea of how to balance the shapes or the weight of a texture that you're doing or a pattern that you're doing um, and how it moves along in the woven piece. Use larger objects to take up more space but also make sure that you have an even balance of positive and negative spaces. Try use objects that are of the same scale and weight. Choose the weight and scale of the object in proportion to the space. Also try using patterns that are in re repetition or to keep the distance between each object at an equal distance. Placing objects that are next to each other create a balanced appearance. Continuing the appearance of an image off the page or off of the warp can create great visual interest, but be sure to include other objects in there so that it balances the weight of the entire composition. I hope that this tutorial was helpful for you and that you have a better understanding of composition. And if this does help, please leave a thumbs up. And if you have any more questions on composition, then please leave them down below in the comment box and I would love to help you. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time. Bye.